got a message introduction before we get to scripture. Let's say you're asleep in your bed when your alarm shocks you awake. I don't have one of them phones that alarms me, but uh, a lot of people do. But you pick up your phone and see the headlines. Filled with the news of approaching thunderstorms, <coughs> overnight killings, fires, stock market plunge, government scandals, car wrecks. Instead of jumping out of bed, you pull the covers <coughs> over your head. You know what a fearful world we live in, and you dread facing the challenges of the day. Maybe you're worried about your job, downsizing trends, or maybe it's a business deal that has your career on the line. Maybe it's the mortgage payment, marriage, kids, or the fear of what? message today hopefully will help you through these situations. Before we turn to scripture, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you tell us in your word that you are there with us at all times. We ask, Lord, you would bless us this morning as we Hear a portion of your word, may it enter our hearts, may your spirit dwell within us, that we might understand and know what you have for us today. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture this morning comes to us from Mark chapter 4. And I'm going to read the first two verses, and then I'm going to go to verse 35 to 41 through Mark. 5, verse 1. Mark 4, verse 1. Again, Jesus began to preach by the lake. This is the second time that he preached by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it, out on the lake, while the people were along the shore at the water's edge. Uh, so he could see the people and the people could see him. And he was out where they could uh, hear him. Verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They continued across the lake. Garrisons. So I've heard preachers when I was young, they had three points. Well, we've got three points and then four more. So if we if if I had the sermon like Jesus did, it'd take all day for this chapter. So that's why I So the first point is about the setting. So the setting is, is where Jesus 
was along the seashore in a boat preaching right along the Sea of Galilee. Big crowds gathered around and it was so large that he kind of got pushed into the boat. And the reason he got into the boat was so he could see them and they could see him. He spent all day teaching. Now, would uh, the crowd stay here if I spent all day teaching or preaching? Here, would you stay here? Probably not. But Jesus spent all day preaching, and the crowd stayed there until they decided Jesus said it was time to leave, which was at night. So at the end of the day, Jesus said, Let's go over to the other side. So he left the crowd behind. And they took Jesus along in the boat as he was. And there was also other boats with them. I don't know what they had to do with it, but they they uh, came must have came by boat to listen to Jesus too. So, uh, so in this setting, we have some things to consider before we get into the storm. The long day of teaching. Just like I said before, after a long day of teaching, some people would leave. Nobody left. Jesus, at darkness, had to leave or said, let's go to the other side. So then the disciples, the disciples were with him and understand that the disciples Watch Jesus do miracles. They listen to Jesus teach. And they had a long day too. Because sometimes the disciples at this time listened to Jesus, thought he was a great man, but they really didn't know Jesus. So a long day for them too. And then the time for setting out across the sea is another thing because the Sea of Galilee has a, a probability of having storms come up all of a sudden. So if, if they thought about that, then they wondered about storms, plus setting out across the sea and darkness. The other thing is they had to get away from the people so they can get some rest. So, uh, when we consider those things, some of those add to the storm that we're going to talk about now. So, we're at Mark 4, 37 to 41. So, the storm comes. It says, in the darkness, it's after, after they proceeded out on the lake, a squall came up, and the waves were beating the boats, and the water was coming into the boats. And Jesus was sleeping in the stern. And the disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care? We drown. The teacher don't you care about us. Jesus got up, but just the idea that Jesus slept means he's human. He was tired. But he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. And he said, Quiet, be still. The wind died down. And the sea was completely calm. And then Jesus.
Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And then it, then it reads in, in uh, the Bible, the disciples were terrified and asked each other. They were terrified that Jesus could control the winds and the waves. So they said, who is this that can control the winds and the waves? So when I came up with this, this message, had to do with uh, reading a book. Of course, I like to read books, but it has to do with hope. David Jeremiah wrote that book, Living Fiercely in a Scary, in a scary, scary World. And sometimes this world is scary just by what's happening. So the third point is about reaching the intended destination. That's why I included uh, chapter 5, verse 1. After the storm, they continued to the destination that they, Jesus originally had planned, that is, across the sea. So when we talk about reaching our intended destination, There's four points, and they all have to do with God's word, and they all have to do with a, a word that starts with an A after that. Four points. God assure, God's word assures us of a safe landing. So, when we think about a safe landing, there's two, there's a destination. But there's two types of destinations. There's a temporary destination. And that's a life on earth, storm and all. We made it through that storm. That's temporary. The second des destination is the, our ultimate destination. It's the eternal destination. So when we think about uh, our safe landing, where are we going to land eternally? So we, uh, in order to have a safe landing, we have to know who is taking care of us or who's walking with us or who's, who's carrying us along. Think of the footprints in the sand. There are four, two sets of footprints, and then all of a sudden there's one set of footprints. Jesus carries us. So that's what we're looking at for the safe landing. God's word also alerts us to expect stormy seas. I'm going to read a portion out of James 1, 2 through 8. Apostle James was uh, Jesus' half-brother, and he talks about stormy seas in this life. And I'm going to read this passage. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that we may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. A man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. So, 
So when, when uh, James talks, he says in verse 6, like a wave of sea drift, of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. That's kind of who we are. Without somebody's hand stretching out for us. In verse 2, he says, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Jesus lived a perfect life. But he was given no exemption from storms. He went through a storm being perfect, dying on the cross for us. Even before that, thinking about what he had endured, going through a storm. So, if if you want to look up texts, I'm not going to read them all. Hebrews 5 verse 8 has to do with trials and storms. Romans 8 verse 32, if you want to write these down. Matthew 10, 24 to 36. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Matthew 7, 24 to 27 talks about the sand and the rock, building your house on the sand or building your on the rock. People who place their hope in God withstand every storm because they have built their lives on the only foundation that cannot be moved, and that's Jesus who is our rock. Next part, God's word announces that the, the Savior is on board. God's word tells us that Jesus is with us. So let's talk about the disciples. At this time in Jesus' ministry, the disciples were too inexperienced with Jesus to have a faith devoid of fear. They knew who Jesus was, but they didn't have the faith yet. They didn't have the experiences. So are you one who identifies with Christ? So you draw no assurance from when the clouds roll in. Do you try to avoid a storm? Say you can run, but you cannot hide. And it's true. In this case, the storm will find you. You're not going to go through this world without a storm. You don't get to decide whether the rain is coming. You only get to decide whether you carry an umbrella. Jesus said in Hebrews 13, verse 5, I will never leave you or forsake you. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Another text is Psalm 46, verse 1 to 3, that you can write down and look it up. But all has to do with Who's in the driver's seat? Are you in your own driver's seat? Or is Jesus driving you around? So our fourth point of our final destination. God's word affirms that faith drives out fear. Charles Spurgeon uses two biblical examples to show how one's faith can grow be stronger and more complete. The first is David, Psalm 56, verse 3. 
Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in God. And the second is Isaiah, Isaiah 12, verse 2. I will trust and not be afraid. I'm going to read a portion from this book. Comes at the end of this chapter. It has to do with us. Put yourself in the disciples' place. When the disciples stepped into the boat with Jesus, they did not even have the first kind of faith. They didn't put their hope in Jesus, so their fear escalated to sheer terror. When Jesus awoke and calmed the storm, the dawning realization who he really was, ratcheted their faith to a new level. Later we learn that they became utterly fearless, proclaiming the truth of the kingdom in the face of all kinds of storms. After Jesus died, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, that's when they went out and did what Jesus commanded us to do. So later, we learn that they became utterly fearless. In this storm, they were terrorized. But having gone through a storm, several storms, they became fearless. Proclaiming the truth of the kingdom in the face of all kinds of storms. Had they possessed mature faith that day in the boat, they would have curled up and napped with Jesus with no regard to the storm raging about them. Just knowing that Jesus was there and he was going to take care of them. No matter what your trouble is, you can call on God in the midst of it and he will calm the storm. He won't get rid of the storm. He'll calm the storm and take Deep is the joy of the one who calls on God before the storm. For he will find that his faith drives out all the fears. So it's, it's not about the storm. It's about your relationship to God in the storm. So we were talking a little bit earlier this morning church started about what is behind us, the past. I always talk about the past, present, and future. Well, by the time you can think about the past, by the time you say present, it's already past. So all we have is our past and our future. So our future is future is walking with God. Our ultimate destination is eternal. Ultimate destination is eternal with God or eternal in hell. Shall we pray? Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace that you give us daily. We thank you, Lord, that you have, you have promised in your word to walk with us as we go through this time on earth, through the storms that, that we have to work through, that you will carry us through. Help us to realize that, that you are with us all the time. Lord, help us to understand that when we ask you for something 
in faith that you will give it to us. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us now as we ponder upon that as we go through the storms of life. And may we look forward.